Yeah, my name's Craig Tweedy. I'll be representing the BLE LTR today. Uh, this LTR is led by Ken Dunton and Jim McClellan. And we focus on advancing understanding of ecological dynamics, the land sea interface, and the changing Arctic. Um, our whole LTER is made possible uh, purely because we've been allowed and also welcome to work on lands owned and managed by uh, various Inupiat communities in northern Alaska. And so it's largely this relationship that we'll draw from today as we showcase um, some of the human environment, inter human environment linkages uh, that I'll be, I'll be talking about. And you'll see this relationship is also reflected strongly in our native land acknowledgement and DEI statements that are readily available um, on our website. So we've uh, just finished our uh, second full field season since uh, our LTR got started. And uh, we also um, uh, just finished up our midterm review in September. We've maintained uh, collaborations with a, a range of uh, different um, agencies and organizations and several new grants have been acquired. We're particularly proud of uh, our two graduate students, Brian Kim and uh, Natasha Griffin, who uh, collaborated across institutions and were able to secure a $25,000 grant from the North Pacific Research Board. Now, in terms of uh, human uh, environment interactions, um, the BLE uh, spans multiple um, uh, sort of I guess we've got multiple examples of this of, of human environment interactions. So we span urban, industrial, uh, protected areas, and also we work in remote locations. Um, the BLE builds on relationships that we've built and maintained with northern Nupiat communities um, for several decades. And uh, we've developed a traditional knowledge uh, committee and we also draw from a range of different relationships we have with individuals within the community um, as well. So we, we build off a, a mix of structured and unstructured approaches when it comes to incorporating traditional knowledge in, in the work that we're doing. Um, but we're really focused on advancing sort of co-production of knowledge in, in a range of the activities that we, that we pursue. Um, this is... Uh, that result in a range of different outcomes. We've been able to uh, welcome uh, tea, traditional eco ecological knowledge into our science. Uh, we've exchanged uh, knowledge, observation, hypotheses, underpinning some of the changes that we've observed. And uh, we've also responded to various requests from the communities for scientific feedback, such as uh, screening uh, uh, various subsistence uh, Harvest, harvested material uh, for, for contaminants and whatnot. We've also created win-win situations for educational opportunities where we actually conduct a range of different um, oceanographic and other outreach activities with, within communities. And uh, we've also seen our, particularly our grad students invited into the communities to be a part of, uh, of their subsistence lifestyle, including uh, processing of subsistently harvested uh, food products. Um, some of the key challenges that we've experienced over time uh, include allowing uh, enough time amongst our, in our, within our field program to allow these relationships to grow and finding that balance between a structured and unstructured um, engagement process. So it's sort of about getting the job on, on one hand, you want to get the job done, but on the other hand, you want to build opportunity to allow for serendipitous discovery. And that, finding that, that balance is sometimes a little tricky. But one of the environmental phenomena that's of most interest to communities is coastal uh, erosion. Um, and within the BLE, uh, you see in, in the little figure on the left there, you see that uh, planimetric and volumetric uh, inputs from coastal erosion into the lagoons that we're studying is one of our core measurements and integral to a lot of the central activities of, of the BLE. Um, but we're also making these erosion measurements available to communities to aid decision making. And an example of this is down on the, the lower right, which is a web mapping application that we've built and allows uh, communities to sort of dig into some of these uh, data sets and look at long term erosion. Uh, trends at the scale uh, needed for decision making. 
So this, informa this information has been used for a range of town planning activities, conservation of cultural resources, boat harbour uh, development and maintenance, and several other activities. So some of the long-term trends that we've seen in coastal erosion are pretty stunning. Um, uh, these measurements were made in Elson Lagoon, the Ithkiavik, on the western Beaufort Sea coast. And uh, uh, the, the erosion rates that we're recording there approximate uh, average rates recorded across the northern uh, Beaufort Sea coast. Uh, but what, what, what's interesting here is when we look at different locations um, along our, our study area, and we compare modern erosion rates with historic erosion rates, we see that the rate of erosion has doubled over the last half century. Um, and so uh, uh, this magnitude of change is not atypical of what has been seen elsewhere um, throughout the Arctic. But the magnitude of change that we've seen here in the lagoon environments is certainly amongst the highest that has been recorded um, for the Arctic. Um, so for the BLE, uh, the main interest here, of course, is um, how much carbon and nutrients is going into the lagoon system. And we, over the last half century, we've seen over five tonnes of carbon per metre of coastline um, enter the lagoon environments that we're studying. And obviously that's of extreme interest because rates of erosion are increasing. But for communities, uh, it's the planimetric change that is of most interest um, to them. So they're seeing approximately, uh, nowadays they're seeing about one hectare of land lost per five kilometers of coast annually. Uh, this is obviously linked to the loss of caverns, ice cellars, cultural sites, changes in river mouths, uh, changes in the passes uh, through the barrier islands and many, many more. So in terms of what next, we're already planning for, for next year's field season. It also uh, looks to be severely impacted um, by COVID with regards to uh, having re requiring us to have a smaller team than is optimal and spending a lot more time in, in quarantine before we go in and out of, of the villages. Um, we're following up on four key research foci that we identified in our um, recent midterm um, review. In terms of uh, human environment um, impacts, um, we uh, hope to embed improved linkages with collaborators focused on subsistence hunting and, tra and also translating our science uh, into local uh, decision making. Uh, particularly as these relate to adaptation to the significant change being encountered by native communities um, in, in the Arctic. Thanks very much.